Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to part two of CTA of the renal arteries, what you need to know. And last time we left off mentioning about looking at renal artery dissection. Now, most cases I see of renal artery dissection is extension from an abdominal aortic aneurysm dissection. So as you know, when we look at abdominal aortic dissections, we look at involvement, be it celiac or SMA or renal arteries. You can also see dissection from trauma. FMD, as I mentioned before, is one of the causes of dissection. Antiphospholipid antibody associated syndromes can also be a cause. In Ehlers Danlos patients, aneurysms and dissections are not uncommon, and of course, idiopathic. Now, acute renal artery dissections can also be traumatic in origin, but they're somewhat rare. Again, as I mentioned, there are a number of causes. Occasionally, they will be spontaneous, can result in infarction of the kidney. I've seen one case with bleeding, though most of the time, it's an incidental finding. The majority are uh, detected in asymptomatic patients. When we talk about renal artery aneurysms, we talk about the various causes like atherosclerosis and FMD, and it's important to remember that patients who have that same syndromes, those same issues, will often be the patients who end up with focal dissections. Now, whether it's dissection leading to hemorrhage, we talk about things like aneurysm rupture, we talk about dissection and potential rupture, are all the complications we worry about. So here's a nice example. This is a patient, you look at the right renal artery, it's irregular, very nicely shown in the axial and the multiplanar, and on the 3D imaging, you can see very nicely this focal dissection in the patient's renal artery. This was a spontaneous dissection. The patient had some flank pain. Look at this case. Here the patient has a beautiful dissection of the abdominal aorta, and you can see the flap of the dissection is extending into the left renal artery, and you can see the lack of perfusion, this developing infarct in the patient's left kidney. And you can see it particularly nicely on the MIP imaging, because in the MIP imaging, you really appreciate how narrow the vessel is, and you can see that some of the branches are cut off, which explains the developing infarct. Now, when you look at this, here it is on the coronal view, again, very nicely showing you the narrowed vessel, and you're losing a lot of the branches of the renal artery, which explains why there's low perfusion and infarction. Now, we could look at this in more detail, and let's just look at this as we scroll down. You can see very nicely the differential flow in the true and false lumen, and then the area of decreased flow in the patient's left kidney. And then as we track down, we'll look very carefully for the renal arteries. We'll track right there. You begin to see how the patient's dissection really extends into the left renal artery. And again, a very nice look at the right renal artery off the true lumen. Uh, is also well seen, but again, nicely right there. It's beautiful how you can see the patient's dissection. And again, we'll go past that a little bit. And there it is again as we come back. You can see there's a dissection into the left renal artery. There's the developing infarction in the left kidney. And the loss of vessels you can see right here as we look going through that patient's left kidney. Very, very important. And this is very nice on the axial view. And you can see it really well. You also can see as you go from here to the MIP imaging. Now I'm just going to go down the MIP as a slab. You see the differential flow in true and false lumen. Then you come down further and you end up seeing the dissection. You see the minimal flow into the left renal artery. You see the large amount of thrombus or occlusion that's present from the false lumen very nicely shown, and the infarction. So again, very easy to see on MIP imaging. MIP is very good at accentuating flow and lack of flow. So that works out very nicely as you look at this example. Again, I think it's one of the important things to do is to look at things interactively. Now, we spoke a little bit before I showed you a very nice example of rupture of a renal artery aneurysm. And just to make the point that there are a range of conditions, now in patients with dissection and flank pain, at times the concern will be renal artery aneurysm and possible rupture, but again, there's great overlap. So I think one of the challenges in the kidney and why CTA works so well, things like infection and infarction 
aneurysms and dissections all can present very similarly. Now, what else? Renal AVMs. Renal AVMs are rare. They're often congenital malformations. They can be large and solitary, or they can be small and numerous. They're usually located near the renal sinus. They're usually solitary, and more common, they're right-sided. Renal AV malformations are rare and can be acquired or congenital. Acquired renal AVMs, or AV fistulae, uh, account for about 3 to 5% of all renal AVMs. Hematuria is the major and most common symptom. Hypertension is one of the other presentations, and abdominal pain, of course. Now, one of the things to also think about when you talk about AV fistulas, these are more commonly caused by penetrating trauma, like a biopsy or an MVA, or other such types of injury. After kidney biopsies, the reported rates of AV fistula are up to 11%. Renal AV fistula after biopsy typically resolves spontaneously, but occasionally we've all seen large post-biopsy hematomas. Here's a very nice example of a uh, congenital AV malformation, large in the patient's right renal artery, right kidney. You can see some of the flow to the lower pole. And you can see what's very important about this case, when I speak about the dangers of non-contrast CT, I always show this case making the point that in the upper two images without contrast, you would have missed this patient's AV malformation. That was the reason for the patient's hematuria. Look how easy it is to miss. It's obvious on arterial phase imaging, it's impossible to see on the uh, non-contrast scans. So one of the important pitfalls to remember. Now in this case, the patient had a prior biopsy. You can see from these two axial images, there's abnormal flow right there. There's an AV fistula right there. There's arterial and venous communication and early venous filling into the IVC. You see the arterial components that are dilated. You can very nicely see it on the MIP imaging, which is ideal against the enhancing kidney, or on the cinematic rendering, which shows you very nicely the uh, fistula, the dilated arterial components, and then the draining venous components, all very nicely shown on this set of images. Now here's a great case of AV shunting with AV fistula in both kidneys. Now, when you look at the non contrast scans, it's hard to tell what's going on. The renal veins look huge, but what's going on? Hard to tell. Does this patient have tumor with renal vein thrombus? You can get big renal veins from thrombus. And if I also skip the early phase and showed you excretory phase, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. What's going on in the renal hilum here? What's happening with the renal veins? I don't know. But if you have the early phase imaging, you see the very early AV fistula, the large early filling of the renal veins emptying into the IVC bilateral. Look at the 3D map. Look how impressive it is. The size of the renal veins, the early filling on arterial phase, and the rapid draining into the IVC. Here it is with volume rendering. Again, a most unusual case. I've never quite seen another case like that. Just a really beautiful example. Now with AV malformations, axial views, again, arterial phase is critical. When you're really trying to outline them, the 3D mapping is critical. So here, another example, the large AVM in the patient's right kidney. You can see there's no early venous filling at this point. Then here it is on the coronal view. You can see it's from the upper portion of the patient's right kidney. And here it is very nicely here. You can see now draining into the vein. You can see this spider web of vessels. Kind of looks almost like the tortuous splenic artery. And here it is in cinematic rendering as well. Very nice example. And again, a few more views. One of the things with cinematic rendering is the ability to present different views. Here I'm showing you the outline of the kidney. Here the kidney is more transparent, and I'm associating um, that transparency with the ability to show the artery and veins a whole lot better. So again, it's very important when you create the images to create the images that the referring clinician needs or the interventional radiologist as they plan the patient's therapy. And here it is on the venous phase. You can see how quickly everything washes out. Again, the point being, if you only have later phase imaging, 
particularly excretory phase, it's hard to tell what you're dealing with. At times, I've seen this read as a transitional cell carcinoma because it looks like it fills in the renal pelvis, and I've seen patients have cystoscopy with stents placed up into the renal pelvis, and they do biopsies, and all they get back is blood. And then they do a CT with arterial phase, and they see what's going on. So again, a very, very big potential pitfall and something important to remember. Now, one thing also to mention about uh, CTA it's also very valuable in vasculitis. And so polyarthritis nodosa is something we see a reasonable number of cases of. It's interesting that PAN commonly involves the kidney, particularly the arterial side of things with aneurysms. Now, just to show you how you can undercall something, this was read initially as some funny enhancement in the kidneys. I guess they noticed this and somehow they also thought maybe that was stones, but maybe that's not a bad thought. But if you go from here to the MIP imaging, look at all of these microscopic or microcystic aneurysms. Look at the aneurysms in both kidneys. There's aneurysms in the branches of the splenic artery, the branches of I showed you the mesenteric vessels. Just a classic example of PAN. And this patient presented with fever and hematuria. It was a CT that helped get a definitive diagnosis. Look at all of those tiny aneurysms. Also, as I mentioned, splenic artery. Here you see off branches of the SMA. You can see right here some of the ileal branches. A PAN, a classic disease of uh, very small aneurysms of the renal arteries. Very, very important to make the diagnosis. And again, CTA works very nicely. Other vasculitis, Takayashi's aortitis, large vessel disease. Here you can see the soft tissue thickening surrounding the patient's left renal artery. In Takayashu's, the most common vessel involved is the left subclavian artery, which was involved in this patient. But here you can see the aortas involved. You can see the left renal arteries involved. So very important to help you make the correct diagnosis. So some of the pearls and pitfalls I've gone through, the most common errors in the evaluation of renal arteries are basic and usually revolve around poor scanning protocol or the lack of 3D and even MPR imaging. Interpretation errors are more common in patients with complex vascular anatomy and occasionally patients with tumors or masses where things become confusing. Obviously, I did not discuss renal cell carcinoma. CTA is very valuable in looking at the arterial map, planning surgery of partial nephrectomy, and looking at AV shunting. We also know the vascularity of tumors can correlate with some of the uh, genetic uh, abnormalities. Vascular pathologies like renal AVM or renal artery aneurysms are often medical or surgical emergencies, although some renal vascular cases are patients presenting with acute symptoms like flank pain or hematuria. Most of the time, it's going to be an incidental finding. And a few good articles about cinematic rendering. This is one of them we've written talking about how cinematic rendering can be very valuable in looking at the kidneys and looking at the vasculature. And I think I've shown you a number of examples in this talk. So my conclusions, CTA works really well for the renal arteries, standardized and easy to follow scan protocols for a wide range of clinical applications. and has high sensitivity and specificity across the range of vascular processes. And I'll remind you that MPR and 3D imaging is critical. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention. And have a great day, and see you soon. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctsus.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.